Welcome once again to The Randy Show. I am the JRAF's field coordinator, Brian Thompson, and with me, as always, is James Randy. How are you doing today? Very well, very well. My voice was a little attenuated yesterday, and I unattenuated it, especially for this podcast. Oh, good, good. Yeah, we were in uh, Colorado uh, about a week ago, so mm. are you recovering from that? I'm still sort of thawing out. Oh, no, I, I, I recovered within... Uh, 48 hours or so, but the, the business of the high altitude and uh, along with the time change, uh, it was a little, little difficult to get around. I uh, I don't do without oxygen very easily at my age, so uh, I have to breathe deep and speak slowly. Yeah, I think that the people in Colorado have evolved some sort of gill that they can just filter out what little oxygen there is in the air. I was looking at Phil Plate's uh, neck, and I, I didn't see anything, and he was wearing an open collar. So, Oh, well, he covers it up with, with concealer. Uh, he may have something concealed in, in his back, <laughs> in his shoulder blades or something like that, but it is suspicious indeed. Yeah, I do. I think so. So we are going to talk about alternative medicine today, specifically uh, NCAM. Uh, it's N-C-C-A-M. It's uh, sort of little known. Uh, subset of the National Institutes of Health, and yep. uh, the Chicago Re Tribune just reported uh, recently on some of the uh, some of the projects that that this division of the National Institutes of Health has been funding. Yes, um, that, Brian, I, I must interrupt you for a second here. You have no idea <clears throat> how many of our viewers and uh, uh, friends and members of the JREF actually sent me that. Uh, on email. They wanted to make sure it came to my attention. It's no surprise to me. Uh, every newspaper that I saw here in Florida had, had it as essentially a front page item. They were very concerned over this, and rightly so. Millions of dollars have been spent over the past 12 years that NCAM oh. has existed. Yes. And uh, just let's just, just go through some of the, uh, some of the list here. We've got $374,000 to study whether inhaling lemon and lavender scents can heal wounds. Uh, we've got... Uh, wait, wait, hold, hold on for a second. I wonder if our listeners know what you actually said, that you weren't mixing two events there, that smelling something heals a wound. And that is actually, that's what you said, and that's what you meant. This is so preposterous uh, it doesn't make any sense at all, Brian. I mean, I needn't tell you this, and most of my listeners will agree, I'm sure. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Not the faintest shred of logic or rationality is contained in that. But this is a government agency who has given tens of millions of dollars to play with, and they want to keep employed. They want to keep on a project. Why don't you investigate whether lavender smell will heal a broken finger? Yeah, we'll break somebody's finger, his finger, there. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry if it hurt, but this is research. This is science, you see, and we've got money. It's financed by the American taxpayers. Oh, that's okay, that right, fine. That that seems to be the attitude. They've got to come up with silly projects, no matter how far fetched, in order to just justify their existence. Do you think that there's any any justification for studying these kind of things at all, no matter how outlandish something is? Like when when do you think something is worthy of study and when is it just uh, something we should move along from? Well we, we could establish a scale. Inhaling lavender is at one end of it, and coffee enemas is at the other, at really at the other end of it. This is, <clears throat> well, that, that whole panoply of the things that the Chicago Tribune uh, examined there and reported on, and uh, which, as I said, made such news all over the world. I got a call from the UK on it, even because it showed up in one of the newspapers there. Uh, we, we must look like idiots to the rest of the world when, when the, the world is so interested in this particular kind of a thing being featured in American news. Yeah, actually, it's $406,000 specifically to study uh, whether coffee enemas can cure pancreatic cancer. I could have done that for $25 and told them, <laughs> no, doesn't work. Well, you got to get the you got to get the pancreatic cancer patients. I'm sure you have to get some sort of representative sample. That see, that's what 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 amazes me is that they're able to to find people that I I assume that if you're in such a state that you're going to 
consider whether a coffee enema is going to cure your pancreatic cancer, you must be pretty far down the line of mortality. And, yes. uh, and according to uh, this report, uh, the people who participated in this study lived an average of four months after the, uh, the coffee enemas. Oh, boy. It's ridiculous. It, it, it is so childish. It is so juvenile. You tell this to a, to a classroom of grade school kids, and they'd be on the floor laughing because they know how silly it is that when isn't the uh, when is the uh, NIH and the NCCAM, which is Senator Harkin's idea, by the way. Uh, thanks a lot, Senator. He insisted on that. I don't know whether you know how how he got interested in this alternative healing thing, uh, Senator Harkin. No, tell us about it. Well, <laughs> very briefly, doesn't take much telling. Uh, he found out. That that uh, that what it wasn't coffee enemas. What was it? Uh, English breakfast tea enemas. Uh, no, it wasn't that classy. Some no, sort of hot drink. It was much less classier than that. <laughs> but uh, he found out that some sort of thing he thinks healed some sort of allergy or some other thing that he had, and he had no evidence of that whatsoever. He took some stupid cure. He got better, and he said, "Ah, that must be the reason for it." He might have also said "aga gabu aga boo boo aga" twice a day, and if he had done that, he would have said, "There, that's the incantation. Let's write that down, and we'll spend another four hundred or so thousand dollars of American tax money on that." This is so damn stupid. There's no other way to describe it. And Senator Harkin, uh, do they still do tarring and feathering? I'm not sure. Not officially. I got some tar outside here. I would volunteer the tar, and I'll shed the feathers if if they if need be. Ah, I see a starling out there, so maybe he he can be talked to and convinced. Yeah. So I, what I don't understand also about this is 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 why it's so expensive. Uh, yeah. One point two five million dollars to study uh -huh. whether massage makes cancer patients feel better. Yes, it will make them feel better. Massage makes you feel better when you get your back rubbed or your head rubbed or whatever. It makes you feel better. Does it do anything other than just making you feel better? Then everybody should have it, right? Whether they're a cancer patient or not. Let's give it to everybody. We could spend another tens of millions of dollars on that easily. They have the money. They're not restricted. They can spend it on any sort of foolish thing that they want to. And they do. Well, according to NCAM director Dr. Josephine Briggs, um, she says that their uh, $128 million annual budget is uh, less than half of percent of the total budget of the NIH. So what? I'm not denying that the NIH does wonderful work, and we need them in operation. But this sort of thing just uh, saps the money off the top and the bottom of all this funding. It, it is so ridiculous. I can't believe that someone hasn't done something. And where is an angry senator? Where are the angry senators? Where are the Claude Peppers now that we need them? We need some people that are going to take time out of campaigning uh, to try to be the next president of the United States to, to sit still for a minute and think, hey, here's something I could really do something about. Where are the politicians, the movers, supposedly, who will move this sort of thing ahead for us? Well, part of uh, the work we do here at the James Randi Educational Foundation, of course, is going after uh, frauds and hucksters who try to sell uh, what they call alternative medicine to uh, helpless people who uh, may not know any better. Uh, and uh, if you want to support us, uh, now is the time to do so. Just go to randy.org, and uh, we would love it if people would donate during our season of reason here at the end of the year. Uh, the end of the year is fast approaching, so uh, if you haven't done so yet and you think you might in the future, uh, now is a really good time to. And if anybody wants to ask you a question to uh, to be answered here on The Randy Show, future episodes, uh, you can go ahead and email me, brian at randy.org, B-R-I-A-N at R-A-N-D-I dot O-R-G, and just put Randy Show in the subject line, and we will answer some of those on future episodes. So, uh, Randy, thanks for being with me today. i, I got to tell you a joke. We'll, we'll close with a joke. Can I do that? Okay, the family gathers uh, around the fellow in the, the hospital who is having some uh, medical problems, and uh, <clears throat> he can't eat. He's got a throat, throat problem, so they have to administer food through another or orifice, and I'll let you imagine what that is. And they do this in hospitals. Some people have to take their nutrient that way. 
And uh, they, so the, the, the lunchtime arrives and the nurse comes around and she shoes the family away. They, they put an enclosure around the bed so it won't be embarrassing. And uh, the gentleman is sitting there and uh, the nurse is saying, uh, oh, would you like some coffee? And uh, he says, oh, yes, I, I certainly would enjoy that. And there's a pause. And suddenly you hear him whooping and hollering, oh, ah, oh, oh. She says, what's the matter, sir? Uh, too hot? He says, no, no, too sweet. <laughs> Maybe we can close <laughs> this podcast with that. One of the worst jokes I ever heard as a kid, but I did hear it as a kid, so I, I'm, I'm getting a little crazy in my old age. Forgive me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You're forgiven. The Randy Show is a production of the James Randy Educational Foundation. To learn more about how we promote science and critical thinking, Go to randy.org.